Hello, everyone, uh, and welcome to uh, the Astroluminal Free Dev Game Log video number one. Um, might be the only video of its kind, uh, but since y'all wanted screenshots, um, I decided to uh, actually just show you the game itself um, in video format. Um, once I get my video set up, you know, finalize all of that. Actually, have uh, dev logs as I on you know ongoing as I develop through the game. So, without further ado, let's just jump right into the game. I just need to pull up my console and run it, and we pop into here. Uh, so, let me just explain some of the elements that you're seeing here. Uh, this platform with this cool looking texture on it is. A, uh, a model um, that you can make in Blender that combines the floor here, this ramp, this ramp, and this uh, this oddly shaped geometry here with this green platform and this green platform. So I've applied two textures to this model. And then we have a, a sphere that we have pro programmatically placed into the world. Um, and it's getting a reflection from a texture that doesn't exist in this world. Um, I can explain that a little later. Then here we just have a simple red box, a golf ball, uh, which is a uh, GTLF exported model from Blender. Um, this, this, uh, I so uh, I forgot the name of the shape, but it, it's a it's a multi-sided polygonal sphere here. That's part of the this model here. And then my wife made an avocado um, in Blender. Blender's a 3D modeling program that we are experimenting with. But not all the textures loaded, but the geometry is there. Um, some of these textures are uh, compatible with the engine I'm using, and some are not. Uh, but here we go. Uh, we have physics. So I can climb on to these geometries here. Um, and my character itself, it's a capsule. So think of like a pill, uh, you know, like a pill you would take, um, your normal doctor pill or you know, medicine. I look like a pill. And the thing, one of the biggest things I've been struggling with so far is camera movement. So when I move my mouse left, camera moves left, camera moves right. And when I push the cam my mouse forward, the camera moves up, pull my mouse back, and the camera moves down. Um, in the beginning, I really struggled with the camera and to not get it to look behind me. So I'm capping the viewing angle positive 90 degrees up and negative 90 degrees down, just like this. Now notice how I get closer to the floor as I move, as I move my camera down, my pill capsule character shape is also moving, and this is undesirable. And that movement explains my pill trying to fit into two geometries like this. So when I look down quickly, I'm going to jump really high, just like that. The geometry couldn't fit, and so the physics engine had to push me somewhere. And this is just kind of a feature I'm working out. In the end, I'm not going to have my character's profile rotate forward and backward like you see here. Now, now as I look up, I fit into this, this, this cavity here. Um, so another thing I'm working on is when I'm looking forward like this and I push the W key, I can move forward. Right, I can move forward in the direction I'm looking. And I'm using um, my game engine's um, ability to tell me uh, what my forward vector is. But when I look completely down 90 degrees south like this, and I push the W key, I'm not moving. So I'm going to hold the W key and slowly move my mouse up. Now I'm moving. So my forward vector is very small right now. 
Uh, that's the thing I'm going to fix. So when I'm looking straight down like this and I push the W key, I don't know if you can hear it. I should be moving forward at full speed. So I should move forward at full speed here, forward at full speed here, and forward at full speed when I'm looking straight up. Now, this background that you're seeing here, that's called a skybox. It was introduced into early 3D video games to kind of give a sort of a world texture. And you notice as I move across my platform, the skybox doesn't change. So it's absolutely relative to my camera. And it's a big giant cube that gets built into the engine. And I just fell off the edge. So I have a little hotkey. I hit F5. I just end up in the state in, in the place I started with. Uh, so other features. Um, so if I look forward here and I push W and I'm moving forward, right? And I jump. Okay, I can't climb onto the platform. But because my pill character moves or actually tilts at an angle as I look down. I can climb onto the geometry just like this. I'm going to remove that feature, I think. I don't know. I haven't really played with it. The problem, though, that I'm having is that, let's say I jump real high, and here I'm pushing W or S. I'm not moving forward or backward, but I should be. It should be looking like this. Now I point forward a little bit. Now I can move. See how I'm moving, and I don't end up back where I started. So basically it's about camera movement, character placement, physics, some uh, lights, some textures, and stuff like this. So just to prove that the, the physics engine is working, I can move this. Now you might be wondering where the golf ball or the sphere went. Uh, the sphere drifted off to oblivion somewhere, but I bet you the golf ball uh, it disappeared because apparently, uh, here's my development log. Apparently, um, the texture I'm loading um, doesn't actually say it right now. Usually, I get here. Oh, here it is. Dynamic rigid body 5v1 has no mass or inertia. Uh, then that's my golf ball. Team model loaded um, it doesn't have mass or inertia information associated with it so if it produces nan values which stands for not a number uh it'll just disappear or do some funky funky weird magic -y things or whatever this sphere up here is a model that my wife is working on and if i get the shader code right for the graphics card it'll look like fur, like a fuzzy, like a stuffed animal, something like that. But this is the base model mesh. That's the geometry of that model. But when I get the shader information installed, that will look like a fuzz ball. So we're still working on that. Um, also, one more thing I wanted to show before I cut out here is when I hit F3, I get this debugger console. It, it looks better on darker backgrounds here. but I spawn that at the top left, you can see my diagnostics. I'm running at a capped 60 frames per second. So my graphics card is actually pretty powerful. Um, I'm recording this uh, video on a 4K screen. So you should be able to see this video in 4K on YouTube. Um, but there's not enough geometry in this scene to actually degrade my frames per second. So if if I can keep my frames per second at 60 uh, with my hardware, at least this is good. These black lines, you'll notice here, that's that's the origin of the world. That point right there is zero, zero. Um, and you'll notice at the bottom left, it'll report the coordinates that my character is at. So if I move backwards like this, what value is changing? So that's positive x, negative x, negative z, positive z, and positive y. 
and then negative y would be me falling. So all I have to do is fall off this world and you'll just see my y value just plummet to the negative. So I'm just falling, just literally gravity, right? And you'll notice my debug lines are actually colored now. Um, I haven't fixed, I, I seem to have a frustum or viewport issue with that. So um, these, this X, Y, Z coordinate, uh, you know, lines here should be color coded and they should be a little thicker than a thickness of one pixel. <laughs> but that's basically it. Um, some debug. And the next thing I'm working on is um, my menu. So I'm working on menu here. Uh, I'm just choosing Google Slideshow or whatever. And when the game loads, I display this menu that says, you know, a warning for people with epilepsy, and that's relevant to me, if you know me. Okay, that, that that's the screen that should be displayed. I don't know what's up with this, but here's the main menu, just some, you know, continue game, new game, profile, settings, credits, scene builder. Now this scene builder here, I'm gonna be programming this game such that I can build my game within my game itself. That's the idea. So that when I finally release this game, people can build their own scenes and their own sequence of events, you know, within their profile and export, you know, those geometries and those scripts and those models, et cetera, and build their own game. So this is like a game engine within a game engine. I'm, I'm actually programming the actual code, you know, in Rust. Um, and... The idea being, I'll be able to, you know, release a game. So, the source code will be freely available. Um, you can see the source code. Um, I'll put it somewhere. I'll put it in the description. The, the link to the source code. Uh, the game is called Astroliminal. It's based on, or the the ideas for the mechanics of the game are based on a game called Superliminal. So, just do a little uh, a Google or a YouTube search for Superliminal. You'll get to see what makes that game special. And it's primarily its force perspective for objects. Uh, so if you go look into that, you'll be able to see what I'm talking about, but I'll demonstrate it later. Um, and so here's some of the scenes, you know, continue game, new game, profile, uh, just kind of, you know, just setting it all up. So I can program it later. I'm gonna I'm gonna get somebody to help me with making these buttons. They're all clickable um, into like nice graphics and stuff like that. And at a minimum, for this main menu here, when the game first loads, this background, this this dark background here, it'll actually be a 3D scene uh, that I can get into later uh, and i can demonstrate that in maybe part of my devlog my official devlog but uh settings credit scene builder you know i had an idea here you know you can read that and new profile low profile so when when it comes to game development um, you really got to kind of plan things out because you, you can't just jump in blind. Um, and there's a lot of stuff you kind of got to take care of by yourself. And, and that's part of the exercise. Um, I'm using the Rust programming language um, with the Bevy, the Bevy ECS game framework. Um, if you're interested... You can Google Rust or Bevy or anything like that. To get more information about Bevy. But, so I have a diagnosis console. And this is it. Just skybox and some geometry. So just testing out the physics, testing out the camera seeing how I move, um, slowly adjusting 
parameters, etc. Uh, and when I get this fixed, that'll be a full on avocado, actually with a with a sibling avocado with it too. So uh, in a future video, I'll demonstrate how to do a little bit of modeling in Blender, and then I'll export that model and load it into this game. So until then, this should give you a pretty you know decent idea of where I'm at at the moment. Uh, basic physics, camera movement. Now I just need to build the game and the storyline and the shaders and the sound and you know it's it's a lot of work. Uh, so let's relaunch this game. Let's again, let's play with the golf ball. So here's the shiny shiny ball. So one idea I have for this kind of uh, this 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 shiny kind of volume reflection thing i could like i could i could make this sphere smaller put it on a pedestal and it'll be like maybe a portal to another world or something like that and here's the golf ball so the, the golf ball probably eventually disappear or settle down i'm not so sure so um I'll do another video where I do a little bit of custom programming just to see, just to show you how, you know, I can edit some of the values. So I can do that once, actually, just real quick. So at this point, um, if I wanted to make the scene less bright. So I can check out my spawn environment here. I can check out the ambient light settings. No, so ambient light's like 500. I can set to 100. And for my skybox, that would be in my camera, uh, which will live in character here. So for my camera settings, uh, I believe I have it also set to 500. It's either 500 or 100. Uh, that's my skybox. So this is my spawn character. So I can make my brightness. Let's call it 50 here. So just to show that I can actually edit and that I'm actually touching the source code scam. I just save it. Let's rebuild it. I don't worry about the warnings too much. We'll fix those later. But here's my graphics card. So the scene didn't get any. Maybe it got a little less bright. See, a lot less shiny. So that, oh. That was that was that brightness. There's more values here. Brightness. All right. Here's the environment map. So let's put let's bump this down to 100. Right here. There's an error in here. It's got to find it. It's right here. What I do with it. Oh, see that? A bug could be just as simple as a tiny little character outside of a function. So it, my, key, my keyboard's sensitive. That's why it happened. So let's run the game again. Sensitive, sensitive uh, keyboard and mouse. Sorry about that. So the skybox is now a lot darker. So like, I could pretend that it's a very shiny day. You know, the the sun is out somehow, and everything around me is bright, but the you you have an ominous sky in the background. So. 
that's a pretty cool effect. I actually like that. I haven't really experimented with that. But just to show you the physics, the objects can interact with each other. So that will keep moving at a constant speed unless I slow it down. Uh, I don't have physics or I don't have friction enabled. Let's get it to slow down. There we go. So let's get this box interact with the sphere here. This orb. But now that's going to continue to go into oblivion until it falls off. Now, interestingly enough, we, ha we have a little bit of a shadow here. I need to get the shadows to be a little darker. Of course, you know, and the gravity scale for this golf ball is low. So watch this fall off the edge. And I will fall off the edge faster than this golf ball. See, look. Goodbye. See? And there we are. So that is Astral Liminal. Uh, do check out Super Liminal. Um, it's the mechanics of that game are the inspiration and sort of the basis for this game. But for my game, I'm going to be implementing everything by hand and from scratch. Uh, to my liking. So we'll see how it goes. Thanks for joining me. I uh, hope everyone has a good day. Cheers.